What is up guys, it's Wii493 here with Digital Dojos. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a local PHP testing server so you don't have to pay for hosting or deal with FTPing PHP files and scripts to your host to just to run them. This is also a great way if you're a beginner because um, it's a free way to try out PHP and get the hang of it. So if you're on a Mac, you'll want to download MAMP, which is uh, stands for Mac, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And if you're on Windows, you'll want WAMP, which is Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So first, I'll show you how to install it on the Mac. I've already downloaded the zip file, and I've extracted it, and it gives us a DMG file. So you just launch that and agree to the license agreement. So now, just like any other Mac application, I'll drag this folder into my Applications folder, and it will start copying. Now on Windows, I have the WAMP installer right here. I'll just launch that. And it has a typical Windows installer. And it actually, it likes to install it in the root of your C drive, which I'm not really sure why. I mean, you can change that if you'd like, but I'm just going to leave it there for now. I'll do a desktop icon. So now it's asking for my default web browser. Um, it does this because you can have it launch files directly uh, into a browser, but you really don't have to set this up. I usually don't. I just hit OK and have it do the whatever it is by default. And then it's going to ask if you want to allow that, and I hit unblock. So next, and then now it's going to launch WAMP Server 2. So on Windows, you have this uh, WAMP icon down here, and if you left-click on it, you have the option to put it online or offline, which is basically starting up or stopping the server. So right now it's online, which means it's running. And then if you also click on this, you have this www directory, which this is the directory where you'll put all your files. So all the, the scripts when you want to run them in the browser. So for example, if I launch up Internet Explorer here, and we go to localhost, So localhost, and you'll see it's it's running this index.php script right now. And uh, we could also run this test.mysql.php by localhost slash that. And you'll see it just loaded that page. So uh, your www directory is basically the home folder of your website. And on the Mac, you just launch the MAMP application you'll see it's going to start uh, the server automatically. It's launched this page for us and you'll see Apache and MySQL server are both online and to access the www folder for this it's actually in the applications folder there is a folder called htdocs which this is your home folder. So this is where you'll put all your uh, PHP scripts on if you're on a Mac. So now that we've installed our local PHP testing server, we're going to write our first PHP script. I'm using a, a Coda for Mac. It's a paid application, but uh, there are tons of applications you can use to write PHP, including Notepad or TextEdit even. But one I'd highly recommend is Notepad++. It is cross-platform, open-source, free application. Uh, I used it for a couple years. It's a great app. Um, you can write many different languages, PHP, HTML, plain word documents, XML, just tons of stuff in it. It's just a great multi-purpose text editor. But first off, we're going to create a new file in our htdocs folder, and I'm going to call it index.php. So if you remember from our HTML series, index is the pretty much the default name for the home page of the website. The uh, server will, will see that name and recognize it's the home page. And the .php extension that tells it it's a PHP file. So every PHP document starts and ends with these two tags, the uh, less than question mark capital PHP and a question mark and then greater than sign. This just tells uh, the server that this is in fact a PHP document. So first thing I'm going to show you is the echo statement. So echo, um, hello world, 
and then end it with a semicolon. You'll see I put the text within quotation marks. So when we load the uh, file over here on our testing server, you'll see it says hello world. So that's pretty simple. You can also change, I mean you can change the text to anything you want in here. You can even put HTML. So you could do hello and then do an h3 tag world. And you'll see it apply the h3 tag to world. The next thing I'll show you is if statements. These are probably just about one of the most used things within PHP. Uh, depending on what kind of what kind of script you're doing, uh, it's likely you'll have at least one if statement in the script. So you start off by typing if, if, and then uh, an opening and closing uh, uh, parentheses, and then uh, opening curly bracket and a closing curly bracket. So it'll look just like this. And within these parentheses is where your if statement um, actually goes. So for example, if 5 is greater than 10, then it's going to do this. So if 5 is greater than 10, it's going to echo 5 is greater than 10. And then down here we're going to type else, opening curly bracket and closing curly bracket. Then we're going to echo. 5 is not greater than 10 and closing uh, semicolon. So if 5 is greater than 10 it's going to echo 5 is greater than 10 but if it's not then it's going to echo 5 is not greater than 10. So save this and we'll reload the page. 5 is not greater than 10. So it is smart enough to know 5 is not greater than 10. <coughs> So what we can also do is set a variable. So we'll just I'll just name it number. You can uh, set a variable by the dollar sign and then um, just some text, any name, anything you want to call it, just a dollar sign and then just some random name, or preferably something kind of relating to what your variable is. So we'll set this number equal to 15 and a semicolon at the end. And then we can change out this 5 here with the variable. It will take its place. And this final one. So if we save it, now you'll see 15 is greater than 10. Okay, so it's realized that this number variable is equal to 15. And 15 is greater than 10. So it did this statement. Um, it's pretty cool when you're first starting out some of these statements, it's it's fun to mess around and, and see what you can get. Um, so if we change this to as less than, you'll see it's going to switch to 15 is not greater than 10 because it says if 15 is less than 10, which it's not, so it'll do the second statement. Um, but that's just a simple introduction. In the next tutorial, we'll go over um, a lot more stuff. Um, including maybe some forms on websites so people could sign up for your website uh, integrating with MySQL um, or leave a comment if you have something you'd like to learn how to do uh, the next one will be a lot more in detail on the PHP side but thanks for watching check out our site at digitaldojos.com if you have any questions email us digitaldojos at gmail.com make sure to check out our gaming channel Dojo Gamers thanks for watching